Sunday. Who knows when I will actually put this video out, but Sunday right now, I just played beach volleyball for the last, like, all day, probably since 11, and I think it's six now, so it was a fun day. I might have gotten some color, played like six games, so tired, but I wanted to hop on here while it's kind of good lighting outside and show you guys a little bit more into my brand. I wanna show you and flip through my sketchbook um, that is kind of the foundation of and tells the story of the prints that I'm making and why I'm making them and um, story that they tell and the sustainability actions that I'm hoping that this company will have. So yeah, we'll hop into that right now. And I'll also maybe show you guys a little bit of a uh, room tour, house tour, cause it's super cute. This is, I live in a studio, I live in Santa Monica. Um, absolutely love living here. Um, I definitely want to start videoing and showing you guys a little bit more of the um, things that go go on and like the different communities in Santa Monica. There's a lot of like clubs for sports and um, like just meeting people, lots of like entrepreneurial um, inspired things. So that's why I really love it coming from like a design background and also playing sports there's always something really cool to do and um it's not like i've lived in other cities before and i feel like sometimes other cities like the only things to do would be like uh go to a bar and drink and sometimes that's super fun um but i also find a lot of fun in uh, talking to people and um, learning more about each other and like making new friends and um, playing sports along the way and I found that like joining communities is um, the best place to do that and like really create really good relationships with people um, as opposed to just showing up at a bar and everyone is drinking and you know sometimes super fun but also like creating that community um, is really great. So I'm very grateful for the place that I live and how close I am to be able to be and like attend those community things. Um, definitely gonna be showing you guys a lot more of like volleyball and like run clubs that I'm a part of and surf club that I'm a part of. And um, there's even some more clubs that I'm wanting to like join very soon. So I'm gonna be really excited to show you guys. but. It's a little video of my place. This is my current um, and main like studio room. So my bed is right here. And then I have like my little TV area over here and my closet. My closet is currently not in the best condition, um, but I love her anyway. Um, let me see if I can show you guys. Apparently the surfboard is literally sideways, you know, but that stuff happens. Um, it's a mess, but I love her. Um, there's that. And then so this is like my studio room and I'm very grateful that even though it's a studio, it's a little bit compartmentalized. So that's my um, little living section. And then I have also like a little seating area, um, which I love. And then I'm like right out side on the first floor is my apartment and then over here I have like another little storage clothing closet also overflowing right now but you know that happens and then come in here it's my bathroom um, this is actually a really old print that I made um, in school I did like a whole women empowerment um, collection and it is all different kinds of boobs. So it's like ones that have gone through breast surgery and there's like a stitch on them or, um, you know, just embracing femininity. We love that. And then, so that's that. That's my bathroom. And then we go in here. Currently also a mess, but my kitchen and my little live-in um, space that I've been working on my brand. So lots of hanging things, ideas, um, corner desk here, lots of work, a little monitor happening. And I'm hoping to actually 
where this corner desk is, I want to actually put another corner desk here. This is currently just like the whole little area where I throw down anything that I need. I uh, also need to hang this amazing Vogue um, editorial piece that I have. Um, and then these are actually some old wovens that I have. I painted that cactus. Still need to finish it, but that is it for now. Um, and then my little kitchen. So I have an old like 1950s stove, which always reminds me of Gilmore Girls if I have any Gilmore Girl fans out here. And then really need to cover this water tank. I say that like every day, but. And then just a little sweet little kitchen area. Probably should have closed that drawer before I showed you guys, but um, super cute. And then I have this wonderful back door area which I love and I feel like that's super rare surfboard. My other surfboard is still in my car. Um, but yeah, I have this little seating area, which I love. Um, she's super cute. And then a little storage. And then lots of plants because I literally love plants. So I'll show you guys my plants. I would love to like grow more things, but we don't exactly have that. Space right now. And yeah. I'm gonna be Also, totally forgot to mention to you guys, I have these amazing like fragmented mirrors. I'm gonna add the link to them. Um, but they cast this amazing rainbow kind of speckle on your house, and they also keep um not like direct light able to come in through these so you can't really like see straight through which is always great for like a first floor apartment and then also when you pan over in like certain times of the year it literally casts a beautiful rainbow oh my gosh i'm so glad you can like see that in this picture it casts like a beautiful rainbow right where my surfboard is and it's just like super happy it usually actually ends up going into the other room as well and then like if you can see like over here um but i just love it but so i'm gonna actually show you guys i'm gonna hop right into um showing you my sketchbook i'm gonna throw this my camera over my Hopefully you can hear me, there is like some kind of helicopter outside my house. So let's see if we can get it. Hi! So I really, I'm um, just learning the whole vlog thing. I just learned the difference of the zoom lens from AF to M. So um, M actually keeps it on not like auto focusing. Um, so I just adjusted that. I'm going to move this up. And so, you know, so learning. And then also the sound of it auto-focusing will not go off anymore. Um, and I actually set up like a little tripod-esque type thing so that I won't shake as much when I'm showing you guys. But so this is my Invasive Plants uh, sketchbook. I actually created this in college. My capstone collection so my senior year last semester um, and basically how this started is I was thinking about concepts for my last year and or yeah my last year and my last semester um, you have like one class that's worth like six credits and um, you create an entire collection that like is based off of like your best work that um, from what you've learned in college. Um, so I actually was approached by one of my professors that wanted me to work on this special project that they were research about to start research on and um, wanted me to kind of create my collection also into um, this research project. So she told me the, you know, the synopsis of it and told me it was going to be about invasive plants and the invasive plants were from um, the, I think it was from the Wissahickon Trail near me. Um, so, and then also just trails around 
uh, Philadelphia and Pennsylvania as a whole and finding out if there's a way to um, create these invasive plants and take them out of the trails and neighboring environments um, since they're invasive plants and they're taking over the native um, plant soil and nutrients and minerals um, and interrupting that growth for the native plants that actually we need to be growing uh, where they are are taking over so um, they actually did research into figuring out if we can commercialize um, invasive plants into creating into fibers and dyes um, for the biodiversity and environmental sustainability uh, aspects. Um, combining the concept of invasive plants with the storyline of forbidden love and unrequited love. So that's my little um, font here. And basically, so what I was thinking about, I was thinking about if that is something that I would want to do um, as my final collection, because I knew I was going to do like wovens and prints and tell a story. And I was kind of like not sure what my story was going to be. And I thought that this, the idea of invasive plants and the sustainability aspects of the um, research was so amazing that I knew that I could create a storyline and a narrative that also paired well with that so that I could create a bunch of prints and have like a, a deeper, even deeper, deeper meaning into that. Um, so I actually, in my head, it's actually, it's so funny, it's during winter break, I was like just cleaning my room and this like poem popped into my head and I was like, oh my gosh, invasive plants can kind of also tell the story of like, or be a parallel to forbidden or unrequited love because um, invasive plants are allowed and belong in a certain area and are like not invasive to their native habitat and like niche environment, but they are invasive to the areas that they're taking over those native plants that they didn't originally um, derive from. So I was like, wow, there's definitely a storyline here. And it came to me. Um, and I was going to show you guys that poem at the end, but I might actually start, start with it now. And then I'll tell you guys kind of like, the since it was like the beginning of my um, thought process so this is the poem and then I eventually make it prettier but um, it starts here and it goes your love began with one bloom beautiful and graceful peaceful and all of a sudden grew into an another all around me I watered and cared for keeping it happy making sure it only saw the bright side of the sun it kept getting stronger and stronger so much it was consuming. All surrounding me were these blooms, these thoughts of you, soaking up the sun, my source of nutrients. When I looked down at myself, I had thought I was happy. I noticed I was giving myself away, all for love. When I looked back up, the blooms turned into bloom, more blooms. A garden had grown up the hill, which would provide what it needed. I looked down again and wondered how. How had this become so? It looked promising, but looks had deceived. I picked one of the blooms, I examined it closely to find the truth, and I realized it did not need me because it got everything it needed from its surroundings. It was invasive. It harmed what it and disrupted what it once needed. What was I to do? I had only thought of you. So I wrote that in my bedroom, my childhood bedroom. Um, while I was cleaning my room one day and I was like, yes, this is exactly the story narrative line that I want to go with in this invasive plant project. And now it's becoming my brand. So it's really kind of full circle, um, and really exciting. So I'll jump into that and kind of my whole collection and idea of my collection was to show this poem into um, visuals using the invasive plants that we were researching um, and kind of tell this story in a beautiful way. And um, what is unique about this poem is, yes, in this poem, kind of the person writing it 
is realizing that um, it was like forbidden and unrequited love. Um, and deeper into that was actually like, it needed to not be there anymore. Um, and it was taking over everything and it didn't need to, that surrounding anymore. Um, which is a really kind of deep concept. Um, and I kind of took it another level and kind of telling that story of um, almost like a coming of age into the realization that not all things last forever um, and some things are um, not meant to be or not meant to stay exactly the same. Um, change is always happening. and But that doesn't mean that it's not beautiful. It's not a beautiful story. And um, doesn't mean that it's invasive everywhere. Sometimes it needs to just go back to its native land and um, or things need to be changed to uh, make sure that those native plants that are in that area have enough power to um, survive and thrive and maybe take those invasive plants out. So um, got, jumping into that storyline, kind of like playing a lot into that. So I knew I was going to be, so this was kind of my first ideas thinking about like you know picking up all of the taking all the invasive plants that we could find um out of the environment and then um that like it was invasive too and so some of the plants that we took out were uh devil's walking stick garlic mustard kudzu japanese barberry japanese honeysuckle japanese knotweed Multiflora Rose, Norway Maple, Privet, Tree of Heaven, Wineberry, Oriental Bittersweet, Japanese Stillgrass. Um, so we actually discovered, so we kind of did some research into these and then what they look like so that we could find them. Um, and then also like the story behind them of how they got there. A lot of them get there through um, shipping and transportation. So like boats or um, any thing that's like being shipped from other countries usually sometimes have like small little seeds or just even like leaves or um, berries sometimes like get into packaging and um, can actually get transported there and then it's basically almost just like dirt and it can end up anywhere it can end up in the fields and then as soon as it it's just it's like wildfire that it can spread. Um, so then that's the poem. And so I started with some line drawings and then also some watercolors. So a lot of the sketchbook is um, watercolor and drawing. So this is wine berry. So drawing like the berries, the stems, and the leaves. Uh, this is multiflora rose. Um, and then kind of telling the storyline of where these come from, where they're growing, um, their like temperatures that they can live in and survive in and the ones that they cannot, um, how they grow, you know, the leaves, the stems, um, the flowers, the berries. And then this one's multiflora rose, uh, flowered with, I wrote like little notes like as I was drawing them to potentially be able to re, um, paint them as I was going and then this one's garlic mustard and then oriental bittersweet those are those berries and then Japanese still grass Japanese honeysuckle is here Japanese barberry I actually never got to drawing that one um, and then some of the ones that ended up being the prints that I'm working on right now are actually the ones that um, we did find a lot of in when we were like on the trails and stuff. So we ended up using a lot of those into like the dyes and fiber research. Um, so those are actually the ones I ended up like doing prints into because it just kind of came full circle and was great to show those plants in different lights and different facets. Um, so then this is Privet. And then uh, Devil's Walking Stick. This one's really cool. I haven't figured out how I want to um, paint that and draw that yet, but we'll get there. Um, 
I think I'm missing a page here. It's like double, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. And then, so this was some ideas of like potential prints or like uh, engineered prints. So I was thinking of like berries and then like rips and holes and like the final cloth of it. And then like invading ideas of like embroidery or like something coming over this, maybe like a dye or something. And then um, like a dyed on after or dyed on before or during making it. Like if I wanted this to be, um, printed like a printed visual or if I wanted to actually dye it um, these are some ideas that I'm still actually working into and thinking about um, when I opened my sketchbook back up I was like whoa these are some great ideas everyone's calling me <laughs> um, hold on let me text real quick okay I'm back. So, and then um, some like woven ideas that I was thinking of, like um, my collections for this brand currently don't have any wovens yet, but is still a really big idea for me to do. Um, but so some ideas for that. And then I have some quotes, uh, be so full that even if they take and take and take, you can still be overflowing. And then some mood board and collection ideas. Um, this is kind of thinking of like, these are like plants that also like are on rocks and like looking really rough and like maybe some plants kind of give you that feeling of um, rough and grit and not belonging. Um, and then this is actually like some of the dress mock-ups that I was thinking. And then, um, this one I was playing with layers, so I actually had like this kind of like cool mesh. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this cool mesh type woven fence thing and like seeing what I could do with that kind of idea of like certain plants not being able to cross others or like overlapping and winding. Um, I actually added some sandpaper in here too. And then this is like a deeper look into Devil's Walking Stick. So that's those, and then those images. Um, and then I wrote, like, their touch may kill. They are deceptive because they seem fine from far away. However, instead of having, um, kind of just going into playing into the idea of um, marrying the storytelling narrative with actually the facts of the plants so some of these are actually like poisonous to not only the like soil and materials but some of them are actually like poisonous to people so that was kind of cool to be able to do that research and then actually this page folded into three you can see there um, and then actually continues like the facts around it when it blooms the flowers things like that and then this one is kudzu, so this is actually a different plant. This is the flower of the kudzu. Um, still figuring out how I can turn that into a repeat. Um, so looking through the sketchbook, again, actually, is really fun because I'm thinking about all these new design ideas. And then this one's Oriental Bittersweet. And I actually found this blurb um, when I was researching. So it said, apart from the most obvious cases like the Oriental Bittersweet Vine, Escape from pri private gardens and smothering the mountains one acre at a time. The most painful proof of man's destruction is not what you can see right in front of you. It's what you never see again. Um, so I thought that was just so powerful and kind of also is um, relay relating to the information I was just saying before. Kind of marrying that narrative and the factual information of invasive plants and marrying that with forbidden love and then so like saying um has fruits and flowers located in the leaf um just like more facts about it where they grow up to 66 um inches long and or tall so those are those i'm really excited to put that into a print soon and then this one's garlic mustard another one i have not put into a print but kind of just showing how i work. Um, I actually painted these watercolors onto watercolor paper and I used Doc Martin dyes. Um, 
something I'm really excited to show you guys soon is um, my painting process and like what, how I paint and um, what brushes I use and what dyes I use and paper and kind of my process of painting um, because I feel like everyone paints in a different way and um, I feel like that's what's very different from textile designers versus painters is textile designers love to share how they're doing stuff um, because it's just a very like big family community type idea and like we all share how we're using different materials and like learning new things um, as opposed to other kinds of artists which I feel like sometimes like are afraid that someone's going to copy them so they like don't share any of their information so I'm gonna I'll be really excited to show you guys how I'm painting these um, and while I'm going I'm like creating um, a little color palette of how where I grabbed these colors from sometimes it's literally me making a color palette from testing the color before I apply it to the flower um, and if I like it it stays in the color palette and if I don't I kind of just don't use it but so that's that one and then this is wine berry, some of the berries and the leaves. Um, also over here. And then some facts around it. And then this is like some woven um, ideas that I was thinking, still currently thinking about it, and like how I can like weave the yarn in. Um, so some like engineering print ideas that I can combine. And then this one's Japanese honeysuckle. So some print mock-ups and then some yarn choices that are like playing into the color palette. This is a mood board kind of where I would see this product and kind of the customer basis of like who would be buying this product. Um, definitely someone who's sustainable conscious but definitely focus on femininity and like a uh, story narrative that plays along with the whole collection. Um, would be this and then this is some ideas of where I'd want my prints so I think I was thinking this scarf is really beautiful and then this like sarong type um not a sarong um I'm blanking on the word it begins with an h it's gone <laughs> but that's that and then um some more like mood ideas of who would be wearing this and then I actually um, drew this thinking about um, actually my back image which I'll show you which I thought was super cool like kind of playing into the poem like um, probably because I'm a girl I'm thinking about um, me as her and then um, in the poem like looking back and like realizing everything that was surrounding her like she now knows and I feel like this picture was just like super powerful um but then I also wanted to show like the softness of um her kind of like coming to her senses about like the unrequited love or un forbidden love um playing into that invasive plant poem and I thought it would be like in a very emotional embrace when they both realized that they couldn't be together anymore. Um, so that's kind of what I was trying to create with this. And then it's actually one of my prints that you guys will see more. I kind of showed you guys a little sneak peek of my dress, but I want to show you guys, I have a couple more dresses coming in, so I'm going to show you guys them all at the same time. And then, um, what else do I have here? Some um, actually natural dyeing that I'm interested in doing. And then a really amazing poem that I found about weeds, which is very similar to mesa plants because the mesa plants are commonly weed, weeds. And then um, my other idea and like visual way of showing my poem is I wrote like invasive growth and I wrote the poem here and then I brought this image in of like the line work and I actually put one of my prints in the background so it's like very subtle and almost looks like also the writing of the poem and having it like flow into these are like one of some of the main um, print designs that and motifs that I made and kind of bringing 
um, the girl and then the guy is kind of like turning into the invasive plants and like overflowing and over like producing but also like leaving her um so also telling the storyline um of the invasive plants continuing on on their journey and taking what it needs um and leaving what that once like soil thought needed to grow there um, which was you know super cool i'm like really enjoyed making this um i actually brought some of like the outlines of these um paintings into the same like line work as him and then like brought them all the way through um up to the top here and like inside here to bring those two together to show that they're all becoming one like he's like turning into the invasive plant um and then i finished up for this collection these are like my mock-up dresses so some of these prints this is like devil's walking stick combined with a couple other ones I actually like uh, made it really large and then let me see if I can focus this again because I think it needs to be refocused. I might actually bring it in see if that it's also becoming night here so it's getting a little darker but um so I think that's good and um, I actually blew it up and like multiplied it in Photoshop I can show you guys how to do that maybe when I'm making turning those prints into Photoshop um, when I made that one and then I actually turned the print into that as well so I can replicate that and then there's this one and then this one and this one and then this one and yeah, that's my sketchbook. I'm really excited to show you guys more into it. And like, I'm very happy, happy that um, I was able to show you guys this and hope that this actually like helps un make sense of my first collection and my sustainable ideas and like ethics behind my collection. And really excited to continue telling the story with you guys. All right, bye. Okay.